This is a John Deere. And this is a Run Deere. I can't help but think that the clashing color combinations is not a coincidence. I also think it's probably faster than a John Deere. We're moving. And I haven't bothered to figure out how to change it from kilometers an hour to miles per hour, but I know that it does. And before I get any further, something is making an awful racket back here. I bet, yeah, this fender's rubbing on the rear tire. It's not a big deal. You just have to grab one of these wires sometimes and kind of push things back into place. I think that fixed it. So this is a folding bike. I previously reviewed a very small, lightweight folding bike. This is not really either of those. It comes in at 66 pounds, so you really don't have any weight savings over a bigger bike, but it does fold in half. So if your goal is not necessarily something that's easier to lift, but something that can fit into a trunk, then this can do it. I think that fender is rubbing again. I don't know if you can hear that noise on camera. I'm not too worried about it. But that is a 750 watt rear hub motor and it's kind of punchy. So this is a hill right here. I'm slowing down. I'm in pedal assist five. Let's get started pedaling. Whoa. I'm gonna see how you change this thing to miles per hour. Is it up and down arrows? Hey, that did something. That's it, got it. You just hold the up and down arrows and that gets you into the settings. I don't actually know what the other ones do. Those wheels are bright, bright orange. As opposed to the frame, which is a little bit lighter. Kinda like it. Now that we're in miles per hour, I can give you proper commentary on the speed. So here's the downhill high speed test for stability. four miles an hour just coasting down that hill feels fine 20 inch wheels fat tires 20 inch wheels if you haven't ridden one are gonna feel a little squirrely if you're not used to it some people don't like this front wheel and how quickly it moves back and forth also I think that's part of the design or the layout of this style of bike because your, your weight is pretty far back. I don't think you have as much weight on the front wheel. Because a more normal bike geometry, uh, your body position would be a little more towards the center. So that's something I notice with a lot of bikes is that the weight balance front to back uh, is a little funny. And it only makes a big difference usually if you put a bunch of weight on the rack on the back you'll notice that maybe at higher speeds or going up a steep hill or uh, acceleration from a stop, which this thing accelerates quite quickly, uh, you might notice the front wheel gets kind of light. So this is a pretty typical frame layout we're seeing nowadays. There's some designs where you have a rear shock down here, some have a rear shock back here, some are hardtails and you don't have full suspension. This is a full suspension folding bike. We've got a lockout and open for the front a basic preload adjustment so nothing fancy on this fork whatsoever it's not even a quick release that's a bolted on front axle and like i said we're running these 20 inch by four fat tires these ones are from cst and then you've got some plastic fenders front and rear the rear one seems like it wants to rub on the tire now and then like I said, that can be fixed if I just bend these little fender stays up a little bit. We'll get that out of the way. Really sturdy and fairly wide rear rack on the back. That's quite nice. Slightly larger than average saddle that comes on it. It's got some springs underneath as well. We've got an integrated tail light, integrated front light, seven speed shifter from Shimano using the Shimano turny derailleur in the back. And this looks like a pretty standard 
seven speed freewheel as well. So far, most of the components are pretty entry level, which makes sense. The retail price on this right now is $17.99, but they've got them discounted $500 off down to $12.99. So you're looking at a $1,300 bike at the current selling price on their website. And I would say, okay, that's pretty good. We got 750 watts of power, which it absolutely has. It's like a lot of bikes I've tested recently that are in the lower price range. They're using a cadence sensor in the middle, which I, again, have no issue with, but if not programmed properly, they can feel kind of jumpy. Uh, you notice that even more when you get into a smaller diameter wheel with lots of power, because these can be really torquey. Uh, it's great because they can fly up hills really easily. It's just something that takes a little getting used to because as soon as you start pedaling, it's like that lurch. It really wants to take off. It'd be probably nicer with just a, a mild soft start on this one. But something that's a little bit nicer for a $12.99 bike is that it has hydraulic brakes. Now, they're nothing super fancy, but they are these Logan brand. I've seen these in lots of other bikes. They work reasonably well. They use standard pads. It's using 180 millimeter rotors, front and rear. So the bike stops well. I think that is a nice touch for a bike in this price range. Usually around $1,500 is kind of the cutoff. Less than that, you're not likely to see hydraulic brakes. More than that, you will. So this bike kind of falls in the middle, I guess, because the retail should be higher, but they're currently selling it for less. So uh, as far as the brakes go, I'd say this is a pretty good deal. And the other thing, of course, is the full suspension. There are definitely people that want folding bikes with full suspension. And I do definitely want to address why you might want that and also why you shouldn't want that. There's two different thoughts. One, people are thinking they want full suspension because they want to take a bike off road. They want to go on trails. They want to be out in the country. And this bike can kind of do that. This is not a very good rear shock it's not a great front shock there is no adjustability all this is really there for is to soak up some of the bumps and make the ride a little bit more comfortable so don't expect this thing to be very capable on like a single track mountain bike trail it's not but it is going to make the ride more comfortable i'm going to hit some more bumps in the road intentionally and see how that suspension reacts, see how it actually feels. I don't know, maybe I'll even take it off road a little bit and see what it does. But really, what can you expect for quality as far as suspension components go when you're spending 1300 bucks? Now I will say that does give you some room for improvement. If you decide to do a little bit more of that type of riding or you just don't like how hard or soft this is, you could spend some money and swap that out to something nicer. You could do the same for the front fork, but I would just question, is that really worth it? Or would you just be better off with a different type of bike if that's the riding you're gonna do? Hidden inside the frame right here is a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. They say on their website, they're using either LG or Samsung cells, I believe. I have discussed this before, but obviously battery construction matters as much if not more than the cells inside but from what we know this seems to be a good battery the display is fairly basic some of you may recognize this if you have an older rad power bike the sw 900 is a black and white display you've got a battery gauge on the top left the odometer speed in the middle what mode you're in which we have one two three four and five or it says eco standard or power, same kind of things, and how many watts you're drawing. So definitely we've got really big steep hill over here. When I go back up it, we're gonna watch the wattage and see how much power we're actually getting out of it because it feels like it's got quite a bit of power. They advertise as 750 watts and I don't have any reason to doubt it. If you're wondering what brand of motor they're using, I have no idea. It kind of looks like a Bafang style motor case, but it's something else entirely. So there's the numbers, J and W 104 20 inch, 48 volt, 750 watts. No idea what that actually means, but it's a pretty ordinary hub motor. 
Let's see what it takes to fold this thing up. We have pedals that fold in. We have the, oh, I better turn this off because I don't want to bump the throttle while I'm doing this. Got a latch up here in the handlebars with the safety on it. Folds down off to the side. That's all pretty normal. Latch in the middle here. Put that kickstand out of, the, out of the way. And there you go. So you can see, yes, it's a folding bike, but not the most compact of folding bikes. This is a compromise because you have fat tires, which are wide and big, but they're great for comfort. These are, in a way, this category of bikes are actually one of my favorites. People really like them because they're very versatile. They are not the best at anything. <laughs> they are not the most compact. They are not the lightest. They're not the best off-road, but they can do a little bit of everything. So there's two ways to look at this type of bike, in my opinion. One is you're on a strict budget. You have to have something that folds due to some sort of space constraint and you want a bike that can commute, so you need a rear rack. You want something that you can ride on a gravel road like this, or a dirt road. The best off-road dirt road bike is not gonna fold up. The lightest, smallest folding bikes are not gonna perform well off-road. One or the other may not have the, the rack set up for really commuting. So these bikes are just the good all-around bike that I see people buying as spares. So they might have an e-mountain bike that they love to take on trails, but this is their like around town bike or their uh, motorhome bike that they take on vacations or trips. Or I'm seeing people buy this as their only bike where they know they can't have the best of everything, but they want a bike that can just do a little bit of everything reasonably well. That's latched. That's back up, like that, and that. And as you can see, it really is about a 30 second process to fold and unfold this bike. One thing I always found odd, a lot of companies do this, is the keys being underneath. It's just kind of an awkward, hard to reach position, but it is what it is. And now that I've looked at the bike a little closer, I really think Run Deer, John Deere, and that's saying they copied it, but it was inspired. The throttle works well. It's a half twist on the right hand side. Spins right up. That's pedal assist one. Let me see if the assist levels are tied to the throttle. That went up to about 15 miles an hour. Oh yeah, they definitely are. So on two, the wheel will spin up to 20. I'll have to do these again on the bike because of course that will change. If I switch to pedal assist three. Now the speed runs up to about 24. Pedal assist four, we get up to 26. And pedal assist five, we get 30, 32 miles an hour. Now you'll see in all of these tests, the wattage remained the same at just about 100 watts because there's no load on the motor other than the wheel itself. I had mentioned this in other videos that pedal assist sensors that are cadence sensors like this one, they don't know how hard you're pedaling, they just know that you're pedaling. Uh, and there's two different ways they're usually set up. One is they're set to kind of like a wattage level, so they give you a certain amount of power. Uh, another way is they give you a certain speed. So this one is definitely set up to give you a certain amount of speed, uh, which I do find a little odd because pedal assist one was going 15 miles an hour, which seems kind of fast. Uh, let's see if that's what it actually does with me on the bike. So this is just throttle, but on the pedal assist one setting, which based on that test does limit the power, it doesn't give you full power or Oh, okay, I take that back. 
it does give you full power because it just flashed over a thousand watts on this display for a second, but it limits the speed. So I'm not sure what the limit is because I'm going up a slight grade, but I'm doing 500 watts, 11 miles an hour. But that's pretty quick for a SIS-1. Let me undo the throttle and just pedal instead and see if that it does the same exact thing. So whether it's your pedaling or the throttle, what it's telling the motor to do is the same. Bump it into two. Whoa! It's jumpy. So just turning it to two, the bike was at 500 watts. This explains why the bike was so jumpy. So I was in one, it's doing 500 watts. I click assist up to two. My pedaling stays exactly the same. And for a split second, the bike was drawing over a thousand watts. So the power doubled in that split second when I pushed the button and then it kind of tamed back down. And now it's around like 600 watts or so. So that's where I think this could benefit from a soft start. Uh, it doesn't have to be super slow, just for the first like two seconds, ease the power on uh, and it'd probably be a little nicer. This is the real steep hill that I always like to test bikes on. So I'm just gonna stop pedaling. 800 watts, 650. Ooh, I'm gonna have to pedal four miles an hour, three miles an hour. It's crawling. It is struggling to make it up that. Ah. And then it's kind of a, a lurch when you let off the power too. I can't remember what that grade is. I did check it in another video, but it's over 10%. It is really steep. Figure with my camera and pockets full, uh, you know, maybe 190 some pounds on the bike right now. So that gives you an idea of how much power it has. It's enough to get over a really steep hill like that, but it really did slow it down. Uh, I'm surprised that it slowed it down that much. Although now that I think about it, the top end of this thing seems pretty quick. So I think whatever motor they're using back there is geared pretty high. Because if you take a regular, say, Bafang hub motor that's geared like this in a 20 inch wheel, you'll get a lot of torque, but not like the greatest top end speed. Let's see how fast this thing actually goes. Stop sign, I'm gonna have to slow down. Well, hydraulic brakes are working good. Not pedaling. 25, six, still picking up speed. If the speedometer is to be believed, uh, we just did 26 miles an hour without any pedaling. It feels fast. I, I, I believe that's every bit of 26 miles an hour. I bet if I put a GPS on it, it could be off. If, I would err on the side of, it might even be a hair faster than that. That felt fast. So I always like to get a feel for different bikes and what, what are their strengths and differences with the total package. Because you may go buy another bike that on paper looks identical to this. What I mean by that is, 20 inch fat tire wheels, maybe it's even full suspension just like this one, but the battery voltage, the way the controller is set up, the way it's programmed, the way the motor windings are done, everything has to come together and make a bike that performs, in many cases, differently. The last folding bike I reviewed had tons of low end torque, a little bit more than this one, but it would cap out at 20 miles an hour. That is all the faster it was ever going to go. As soon as you hit 20, the speed basically just stopped. And it wasn't a software controller limitation. It was clearly maxing out the RPM of the hub motor. Now the run gear model is not like that at all. This thing seems to be geared for higher speed. This bike motor wise is very comfortable at 20 to 25 miles an hour. It's like it just wants to go that fast, which I find really interesting because that's just not typical of 
bikes in this configuration. If we spin the motor up unloaded, obviously there's not a 20 mile an hour or 28 mile an hour limit. This thing goes up to 31.8, 0 0.9. So that is the maximum RPM. That means we're feeding 48 volts through a motor controller to the motor and that is now RPM limited. Meaning if we wanna go faster than that, you gotta add more voltage or you gotta change the motor. Most bikes with a wheel this size, you're not gonna see a speed quite that high. Now once of course there's a rider on it that's under load, I was getting about 26. If you're a little bit lighter than me, you certainly would hit 28 on this thing. Might be possible with a little bit of pedaling to hit 30 on flat ground. The downside is the the jumpiness of the power, like I showed you when you go from pedal assist one to two while you're on the bike, it will just spike up to a thousand watts all of a sudden. It's like it just wants to go and it takes off. Certainly something you can get used to, just something I think that could be improved a little bit on their firmware programming side of the controller. So just for the fun of it, let's see how long it takes to get from zero to top speed without pedaling. Cranked it up to five, so we're gonna get maximum power and speed. And I'm just going to twist the throttle and go. past this sign, the, the road actually does go slightly, ever so slightly downhill. We might get 28. There we go. Here's my thoughts on it. Price is very reasonable for what you're getting. At the sale price of 1300 bucks, that's a good bargain. There are a lot of good bargains on the market this year. Prices have come down, inventory is plentiful. Now, the brand is not very well known. I don't have any firsthand experience with their service, with technical issues, because we got the bike for the review and it really just didn't have any problems. So I can't speak to that at all. It does say on their website they have a one year warranty based on the display they're using, the brakes they're using, the entire setup of the bike. I don't see anything proprietary on this, so maintaining it service-wise for the long term probably won't be an issue. So if you're looking for a bike that fits the following definition, you may want to consider the Run Deer. A folding bike because it has to fold, but not necessarily because it needs to be small, because it's, a, it's kind of a medium-sized bike, probably in the five and a half foot range, up to six foot, you'd be very comfortable on this. You know, if you start getting down to five foot, you could absolutely ride it, but the reach is gonna maybe feel a little bit long comfort wise. Uh, brakes are good, no issues there. They work just fine for this. The suspension, we gotta give the suspension a run for its money. I'm just gonna hit this gravel right here. Okay, well the suspension feels pretty good. I just stayed seated on the saddle. For doing that, I went full speed and felt reasonably comfortable. I have had, I will say, suspension seat posts that do just as good as this whole rear suspension design goes, uh, but you don't need to buy that with this. It's got it built into the frame already. And then if you want something that is geared towards what I would consider the higher end of the speed, ra speed range, this bike is not the greatest just because of how the programming and everything's set up on the lower speed settings. If you want to tootle around at five, 10 miles an hour, it'll do it, but it's like, it really excels at the 20 to 25 mile an hour range. So if you're going through town, city, commuting, and you want to keep up with traffic, uh, this actually does pretty well. Just be aware that the slower end, the power is kind of jumpy and that just makes it a little harder to control. And the lighter you are, the more pronounced that's going to be. But I was just moving pretty good on that gravel and the stability was totally fine. So 
mild dirt roads, gravel roads, things like that. If you want to take a bike uh, camping, you know, you don't know what sort of surfaces you're going to be on, something like this would work quite well. Thanks again to Run Deer for sending the bike. The colors are not only growing on me, uh, I've grown to like it. If you smooth out the pedal assist just a hair, I think you can sell this to even more people and more people will be comfortable riding it. But for me, it's been a lot of fun. As always, I'll put a link in the description where you can get your very own.